We go, we go. We go. Uganda cranes, we go. We go. We go, we go. We go. Uganda cranes, we go. We go. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Now, here we go. It's another one. It's another one. Another day, another one. Yes. I'm Miriam Tamar. And GNL Zamba. We are in Simbi. And this is the Simbi Pod. In Simbi Podcast. Yes. Today um, we're in our bright red home. Home let, team, let, me your, let me see the back of your. Let me see the back of your. Let me see that. Let me see that. Let me see that. Look at that. Look at that. Representing. We're on the representing. team. Representing. We are representing. Yeah. Sure. This time, if we don't get any major, if we don't get any major uh, wins, mm. because the energy we're going to put into supporting the cranes, anything yeah. Ugandan, anything cranes, yeah. is going to be so crazy. Yeah. Teammate. We team. go, we, we go. go. <laughs> so yeah, we're wrapping today. We're in our Uganda gear. Yes. Um. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm like. I'm like. Oh. Club no, three times. We're, we're already. We're in this. We're potting. Oh, we're I don't know what's already. happening. Okay, okay. But I'm just thinking. Yeah, I, I feel pretty Ugandan, but mm-hmm. I'm definitely also not Ugandan. Um. What do you mean? At the same time. Yeah. I mean, I love Uganda. I love being there. I love living there. And I feel my best when I'm in Uganda. But I wasn't born there. And there's still things I'm learning, Mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, you know, we just had to practice the cranes chant. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun. Uh, (laughs) Part of being a Ugandan is knowing how to have so much fun. It is. (laughs) To a point that the fun is intoxicating. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's it's such a lovely place. Um, everyone in in the region, that region says Uganda has the best nightlife in the region, mm-hmm. and Ugandans know how to have a good time and yeah. have a good party. Yeah, I'm so, I'm trying to keep up with the. I mean, I used to keep up with the partying, but now yeah, when I'm, we were I'm younger, we used to like party more. Out, yeah, so getting so now serious. We, so, but 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 the party the party can continue and it can be defined by so many other things. You could have a tea ceremony basically yes. in Uganda. With your girls having a body, yeah. having a spa day, yeah, you know, like crazy. all of these night things. And then the boys, we'll have the boys night and be boys, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but we're talking about the experiences. Um, your exp- we, we, We've talked so much about your experience in Uganda, my experience in, in the U.S. Yeah, and we talk about like we're a cross-cultural, interracial couple. Yes, and yes. And we both like ha- get so many pieces of each other's worlds. and. Yeah. Um, and we get to see them like from different viewpoint, from an yes. outsider perspective. Yeah, she uh, sees it yeah. as a white woman. I see it as a black, uh, as a black man. You get me. You see it as an American. I see it as an African. Mm-hmm. You see it as a what would you say? Religion is the, m- my what? Your religion. You see it as a former Catholic. I, I, I see it as a former Catholic. <laughs> I see it now, as a who is now spiritual and more embracing and I of see anything it as spiritual. Jew-ish. You see it as a Jew. Jewish. Yeah, 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 I'm Jewish, but yeah. not so religious. So we have so many of these um, um, differences, but uh, these are admirable differences, I believe, because uh, you've expressed to me of how much you feel at peace when you're in a place like Gulu or in a place like. Um, um, Mukono, when mm-hmm. we were shooting our film, yeah, um, and how everything is so natural over there, and there's a certain different energy that Ugandans have or that the place has um, on you, uh, which brings me to a very interesting topic here, and yeah. which the topic the topic is usually <laughs> it's a topic of so many Africans um, in the world. And um, also in Africa or in on Black Twitter, okay. and the conversations that are being had, yeah. Mm. And most of these conversations are about uh, things like seeing the Kardashians wearing cornrows. Forget me. Mm. Um, and it becomes a question. Or, or Adele recently, even Adele was wearing cornrows um, at a Jamaican yeah, party, I, I and she that. seemed to have a very good time, a good time of her life. So, so it's like, am I, so, uh, am so I, became, you, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. No, I was thinking about my being, me being a Ugandan lady. No, 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 am no, let me, finish, let, me lady? Finish, let me finish this, babe. <laughs> let me finish this. Let me finish okay. this. I, cause this, I need, I need to phrase it properly so that we set up the, the intro properly for our, our listeners. Cause, okay. um, I'm so sure most of them are wondering 
um, or quote in between um, what is cultural appropriation mm -hmm. and what is cultural appreciation like the, wh what divides those two lines and um, how do you see it there's a way that that we s we we see it I s the way that I would see it as an African um, and the way that I saw it before traveling traveling so much um, and there's a way that um, I'm so sure other people see it um, how do you see yeah, it? yeah I mean I think it we can try to make generalizations about different groups of people and how they see it but I think it is from what I've seen, like when I see different debates going on online and even like our own fans, like there's divisions on like, oh, like thanks for loving our culture and and doing African music or different like things like that. And then yes. and then people don't really post it. But I think that there are other people who are confused, like, why do I sing in Swahili or why? Or we sometimes get asked about how yeah. we choose to like figure out our genre. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm our fashion is fused all these yes. things so yeah yes. so look it's really yeah what is so what is cult do you have a phone like let's look up the definition of appropriation or you want mine to yeah i, I, I think there's the idea of taking the dictionary, taking like, someone yeah. else's taking someone uh taking traditions from someone else's culture and passing them as mainstream or your own i think is how i would understand appropriation so uh, loosely understood, I think the way that would l let's just give them a historical context of what appropriation is. And I think we had a discussion about this at some point. Um, uh, appropriation is when uh, some people have certain attributes that define them um, and um, uh, are quintessential to to their culture. Right. Um, it's when you have um, something like um cornrows right cornrows i think which uh black people invented they have pride in it it's a it's a f some sort of identity and you find that in the past most people with either cornrows or dreadlocks have always been looked as as dreadful actually even the word dreadlocks mm, comes from mm. the word dread um so you find that a whole society has been looked at negatively where this hair is not allowed in schools, it's not allowed by um, certain employers who are mostly white or who follow a white code of uh, a workplace or a, or a community. Um, you find that the generation has been bearing this burden for so long and it's almost, th they've just arrived at a place where they own these things and saying, um my culture m m my hairstyle my way of writing mm -hmm. my way of dressing and it so happens that even though they have let me say several black designers right who do that um if there happens to be one white designer who does it the newspapers will rush all, all the media channels will rush to give this person, the white person, more credit, or, more credit yeah. in that field, mm -hmm. lifting them above the people who have practiced or this. Saying, or saying, oh, yeah. so uh, someone white, where, so, so someone becomes, white has yeah. the dreadlocks, and they're like, oh, that looks so cool and trendy, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then she, it's she, the no, black person. Yeah, yeah, it's, no, that that's looks so messy. cool, that's so trendy, that's so agey. Like they said, mm -hmm. like all of this, she's such a risk taker. Oh my God, she slayed mm -hmm. the red carpet and da 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 da, da with her dreadlocks. And they will praise it so much, right? And they will even go to the extent of making sure that person is put in a position where they're almost a spokesperson for a culture that totally belongs to another people. Now, And they profit off it. The, it's in the profit of it, where you profit off it, where it is appropriation. Whereas the line for... I don't know if it's the profit. Okay, I'll, I'll look up. We have to look it up. And my I'll, other I'll question up, is, yeah, I yeah. do, I think a lot of what you're saying is correct, but I also know, for example, sometimes I've, I've heard different stories where there was, I can't remember the actress, someone's wife has been speaking with a Spanish accent for years and then they found out she's not Spanish. Sofia so, Vegara is not Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> no, someone else. But but I'm just saying, you were, you were saying that it's, it's associated with negative uh, cultural attributes that are seen by Western culture as negative, but I don't know if it's all negative. I think you can also appropriate 
global you can take anyone's style like i could yeah i could wear some kind of um middle eastern tunic Mm -hmm. that's gorgeous yes that people aren't necessarily judging as bad but then i'm yeah that's that's what it's it's like wearing dressing up it's in the judgment yes like you're it's in the judgment culture, it's, right? it's in it's in the judgment um we are and we're going to look up the definition and see where uh, if we're wrong or or right are you doing that you're looking up yeah uh, but i remember this coming up in the video that um called play did with beyonce in india where beyonce dressed up as a celestial being i don't know what the what the context is over there but maybe this is a deity that they worship yeah, but they were saying and and, yeah. and the setting, all this. So why is it taking place in India? So people were upset. So that that's another thing. So I don't think that the way India was presented was so beautiful. So I don't very think that be- it was. Very be- I appreciated the colors. It's still, and, they're saying you're yeah. taking what's not yours and profiting off it, or you're taking something that could even be religious. In the case of Dr. Dre and Timbaland, who sampled um, religious songs from uh, from. Asian countries and some mm. uh, um, from some cultures and put them in po- oh, yeah, into popular yeah, yeah. music yeah. where they profited off so much of like a religious hymn. But then again, you see other black people also taking, let me say, gospel music and writing the same melody to a gospel song and profiting off it. And they are not judged um, the way the white people are being judged. I think... Um, what appreciation and what appropriation is historically looked at as negatively when you appropriate something because of the history of colonialism that yeah, the sure. white people in the and the western communities and the the governments have always taken away from other people and not yeah, paid you have not, taken not away give, people's given culture. any respect to yeah. anybody's taking culture. people's yeah. culture saying everything yeah. that belongs to you is is gets degraded but then as things come back in modern times they like get a check of it this is now cool the white man now says this is cool and it's going to be mainstream and it's going to be popular and and profitable okay ladies and gentlemen so here's the actual definition here's a very good definition uh it's it's a loose definition but it says cultural appropriation cultural appropriation is the inappropriate or an (laughs) an Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so bad at this. I, culture, Unacknowledged. L- l- let, me, let me do this yeah. again. Cultural appropriation is the inappropriate or unacknowledged adoption of an element or elements of one's culture or identity by members of another culture or identity. This can be controversial when members of a dominant culture appropriate minority, minority yeah. cultures. That's, that's very important. If you're the dominant culture and you take away your... your I've seen so many people dressing in the traditional Native American, oh, the yeah. Native American headdress. Uh-huh. It's a beautiful, festivals, it's a yeah. beautiful art piece. Mm-hmm. Um, but so many people are angered when they see other people do that because we know the history of white people stealing the land from the Native Americans and killing their tribal so, chiefs and creating almost. Um, a holocaust right. the american De- holocaust definitely a holocaust so in the history of your ancestors stealing from these people you're constantly reminding them that you can steal you get, even yeah. what you they... get punished for this but if i do it it's allowed yes so yes, here's yes, when we yes, read yes. that definition and you're dressing like a chief yeah. basically but when you re- read that definition i thought the easy part was like unacknowledged you can t- mm. if someone says I'm wearing this, it's from blank. It's such a beautiful culture. Oh yes, that's yes, acknowledged. Yes, yes, okay. So then the the difficult word is inappropriate because then you say who decides what's appropriate, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. what's appreciation versus appropriation. So when you think about cultural appreciation and you think about the world and it's a globalized world and there's so many foods that are fusion, there's music that's fusion, um, fashion people are. People are taking influences from each other, from Europe to Asia to Africa. Like, there's all these amazing creative things that happen yes. that we love. Yes. So, like, where, where do you draw the line, or or what? I don't know. It gets really difficult. Okay. So, um, the the definition here of um, um f- we're, we're trying to find cultural appropriation uh, versus cultural appreciation. appreciation. 
And in cultural appreciation, it's appreciating another culture involves an interest in learning about that culture. You share your knowledge only with the permission and always with mm. the crediting of the people who belong to that culture. So that's the acknowledgement. Yes. Yeah. Cult so you have to have the knowledge yes. and you have to acknowledge. You have to have, have the yeah. knowledge, you have to have acknowledge and credit. Yes. And say, I'm designing this fashion line. It's which inspired was originally, by Moroccan originally motifs. By, by, by a, a, a northern tribe in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. And this is their pattern and whatever, whatever. The technique was first developed. Da, 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 mm. da, 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 da. Like give, give the context, acknowledge, and then, yeah, yeah. So I, di I didn't know that the acknowledging is, is, is a huge part in, in separating those. So you, you, before we looked up the definition, thought yeah. it was very much about monetizing. It seems that's not... So if you acknowledge it and you have the knowledge and appreciation, are you allowed to monetize it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Again, it becomes a thing of, are you allowed to monetize um, it while the, the minority group... Suffers for it. Suffers for it. So it's a thing of the big guy against the, the little guy. But we also know there are white people who suffer. It's not always like that um, every white person is rich mm -hmm. or that every um, um, person from a minority group is poor. Yeah. Uh, but you, you find that who has the right... Well, suffering isn't uh, necessarily about money. It's about discrimination. Discrimination, yeah. I think that's, but, but, that's but, more but painful. But here we're talking about who has the right to monetize um, a culture in either... Is, is, it, is it appropriation if you profit off it? No, is it appreciation if you profit off it while killing um, the opportunities for another person supplying in that very mm. field? I, I think that's where, to me, where the profit came in. So you see so many, if you see, if you run a dance troupe, which is an African dance troupe, right? And you're this graduate dancer who studied like in a, an elite, you know, university in, let's say, New York. Mm-hmm. And you go over to, let's say, a village in, in Uganda or Benin or wherever it could be, or India, whatever. And you start a dance company over there, and it so ends up that you find um, that, that, that that area already had cultural dancers. Of course. But when you come <laughs> in, when you come in, you already know how to network, your business savvy. You train your dancers more so they know the cues. You're, it's more choreographed. You can afford the lights. You can afford to do all of these wonderful things. You you can buy the clo clothes and costumes. Where they struggle with resources, you mm -hmm. can do three, four times over. Um, and you find that when, if you come into that community, if you begin taking up all the shows and all the bookings and, you know, they kind of feel like sidelined because yeah. you are now the superior product. Yes, well, are it they, is are kind they, of problematic. Are they yeah. taking the shows or are they um, helping those dancers that, as you said before, were struggling yes. to now... I think it's like so it depends elevate, on... Yeah, it's, it depends on how you look at it. Because, and it depends on how they treat the dancers. Be, are the dancers partners in the, in the company? Yes. Are they... Yeah, because it's like yeah, how that's are they a very treated? interesting thing that you say. Because if you only look at it as the other person is taking away opportunities, you need to first ask: Is this person employing people from that community? You get me? L so we are in on still on our example, are of they, like a dance troupe. Yeah, are, but, yeah. Are, are the dancers locals? Yeah, are the again, dancers yeah. learning also techniques from the other person's country that uh -huh, it adds uh -huh. to their yes, art form? Yes, yes. So there's there's several ways of looking at it. Um, some people have a problem with white people in Africa, mm -hmm. right? Um, but in the same breath, they want their cousins, uncles, doctors, or whoever tra is traveling for a business trip or a vacation to America. They want them to have a good experience. So I think if you expect to have a good experience, if you, if you expect to have a good experience in, um, in these developed countries, you know, um, um, all the western countries and all, and all these other cities I think you should be able to reciprocate the problem is that usually in p problematic places like um, like France uh, like America like Britain 
I'm the like, problem is not a problem. Yeah, the, yes, place. the problem. I mean, the, the, oof. yes, you find that the problem is so widespread that with all of the racism, a black man can only be comfortable in Africa. You get me? Mm-hmm. Uh, it it almost seems like it sometimes. Um, yeah, well, I would so say they, they feel that their safe haven is also still. Yeah, because yeah. so for me as a white woman, I can go to any country, for the most part almost anywhere in the world and feel comfortable, have a great experience, immerse myself in the culture. Yes. Like that's a privilege. But yeah. you're saying, yeah, as a black man, when you go traveling, you're not necessarily, you don't necessarily feel welcome everywhere. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go to the Four Seasons. And um, I, I, okay, I can go to the Four Seasons and, but it's not, it's going to come at a very high cost. Yeah. You get me? Um, and probably I might not get treated the same way uh, another person from the dominant um, race here in America gets treated. Mm-hmm, you find that mm-hmm. you first looked at that with this, with this look of, uh, how, how did you get here? Yeah. Do, do you work here? Yeah. Like, no, I'm on vacation. <laughs> you get me? Like, you almost are, have are to you, explain are you, yourself. So. Are you one of the good ones? Yes. Why? Why? Or should with, I be? Yes. Why? Edge? Why with the ex- even when you have all the funds, the resources, and you're just here to have a blast, it's almost like you have to explain why you are yeah, in an expensive yeah. place. Yeah. Because that's not your place. That's when that, that's not where your kind so tie this comes. back to appropriation. So, but, but, but when um, a white man goes to Kampala Serena, uh-huh. he's given the superstar treatment. You get me? That even other guests might not get uh, it's wrong to mention hotels because i believe they they, they treat most of their guests well <laughs> it's just an example you are just thinking of a fan the fanciest yeah, place I, I, in I kampala. Of, 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 of the yeah. four seasons of, you <laughs> of know, kampala, of kampala you know. <laughs> yeah. um yeah but you you find that they get treated better than um the locals are even treated so, so it's how, that, but i'm still asking hmm. so i want you to i'm trying to figure out with you because this still seems like um a form of either racism or marginalization. I'm trying to then still figure out, like, wh- where's the tie to appropriation? Is it that someone can go enjoy someone's culture in a safe, friendly way? I, I don't even like. Then, I don't even like. I, I know this is a very beautiful conversation to have. In, we, if we keep on calling them this appropriation, and then this is the the appreciation. I know it's a very academic thing and it's important to call most of these things out. But then again, I've seen the benefits of where there's a continuous exchange of learning between two people. Yeah. Where you take the politics out of this because most of these terms are actually crowd, um, crafted by white women who have a guilty complex. So they feel a need to check other white women because of their guilty complex. Do, do you get what I'm saying? It's like... Well, I don't know. Do you think that the whole, the appropriation, I feel like it's yeah. been really brought forth by the black community, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know who's. No, who, no, who it's not only the, the black community. It is the Native American community. It is the black community. Yeah. It is wherever minorities exist or whenever, wherever pe- people have I'm saying, suffered. Where did the conver- who's, who started this conversation? I don't know. I don't know who started the conversation, but I'm talking about how usually we find certain terms politicized yeah. to serve a certain group of people. And I only bring this up because um, um, of the issues in... Uh, you remember when we marched for the women, the women's march that we mm. had? And I kept on asking, where, you, where yeah, are we the... Bl- asking a bunch I was asking a bunch of our African where, and black friends, why yeah, weren't like, you where, there? Like, where are <laughs> our black friends uh, while marching for this thing? And they gave me an education in how the politics here works Mm -hmm. because it's it's still women's rights when they are talking about white women yeah it's very exclusive of black women women of color women of color but but it's non-binary yeah yeah. it's very white white when it comes to the causes and they expect them they use the minorities to push these causes but when it comes to black mothers uh, crying out for for their sons being tortured and shot the white women keep quiet yeah but they'll put up all of these terms of like being marginalized and playing the victim again, the fragility of it, that we, we found that historically the, the, the black woman is the most, um, there's no way of measuring how somebody suffers, but they say black women have to jump through so many hoops yeah, in order to yeah. make it anywhere. 
first of all, there are women, so there's the women's struggle. Then there's also the color struggle mm-hmm. that's imposed on them from, you know, like the systemic racist culture. Yeah. So you find that they don't even want to, they feel used again by, by the system that creates all of these terms and it sounds very liberal, very progressive, but then again, it doesn't serve in, I can talk to you and we can build dialogue. It serves yeah. in the political arena and for NGOs, but it doesn't serve um, the communities that we know where Puerto Rican women and black women or p- poor white women uh, uh, come together each yeah. and every day or in a salon or wherever and figure out how they're going to make it out in New York. Yeah, but Again. I can understand, like, I can, if you're in a group that's marginalized, that uh, ha- there's so much prejudice against your population, and then then those same people are using pieces of your culture mm. as if it's just cool or mainstream or, or without acknowledging the suffering attached to it. Yeah. I see how that would be painful, be like angering yeah. there's there's something there's something that we usually see um so one of the biggest examples i think of cultural appropriation is the whitewashing of things right and in the whitewashing of things um hollywood has done a very good job in uh, turning perception even almost changing the story so you'll find that nowadays if you google black panther Mm. Black Panther, you'll find the movie. The movie rather than the, movie, the actual history. But you'll not find the movement of the black activists. And yeah. so many people, I was mind blown when I was telling young kids, we were shooting the movie again, and I was telling the young boys who are the dancers that there's actually a group of people who are civil rights leaders and people who wanted to take care of their communities and who wanted to link with Africa and, you know, like create this whole Pan African movement. And they didn't know the original Black Panthers. They didn't know the original Black Panthers, yeah. but they knew the Wakanda forever. Yes. You get me? But these are like, yeah. boys that grew up in Africa yeah. who should know this stuff because it's a collective struggle. So in bringing up Hollywood, I mean to say uh, Hollywood always paints uh, African, um, the African gods white when it comes to Egypt, the movies, when they say yeah. gods of Egypt, they'll give it to black, uh, mm-hmm. uh, to white actors. The Pharaoh. The, the, yeah, the Pharaoh yeah. will always be white. It's only Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. It's only uh, Michael Jackson's Remember the Times, vi- Remember the Time video, yeah. where a Pharaoh is black. But we all know the first Pharaohs, the mo- most Pharaohs until Muhammad Ali took over Egypt were actually black yeah. people. Dark brown so, to black. So it's in shade, a way yeah. that you try to own a people's culture, appropriate it, and still keep them in a in a in a place where they feel is subjected. The word um, you subdue the people, you deny them the the powerful examples which which would have inspired their pride, but then you paint and whitewash the history, so you or you, you paint your race as superior. It's a form of um, it's a form of racism too. <laughs> it's actually yeah. A, a, yeah. artistic racism in a yeah. way that you steal a people's. It's artistic um, appropriation. I'm thinking yeah. about that. There was it was such a controversy that was it the Coca Cola ad with Kylie Jenner. It was like during oh Black my Lives God. Matter when people were protesting and uh, you remember with the police and she like hands she like she hands ends the, the Pepsi? ends the yeah I don't know if it was Coca whatever like, some are you, she ends are you the delusional? With, people are she dying stands in out front here. of the crowd as a protester and saves the day yeah oh, i i don't know i don't know how and that, that was, i don't know how that, that made ap- it so i don't know how that made it to um well you do know aired. well we know that a lot of companies use controversy to market oh yeah outrage marketing but um yeah. yeah so and that's an example of appropriating the movement yeah so yeah, yeah so it's so yeah. you still it's uh, you still the movement away from the people that need the change to be made because you're and in a place the of narrative. yes because you're in a place of privilege so um again you steal the spotlight from the movement and people are, will still die their families are still suffering and if it, if they're talking about equal pay and you you i don't know it's been done so many so many times that it doesn't sit well with our minority uh, communities so when they see the few opportunities afforded to them again being handed 
over to somebody else so they feel a certain way yeah, yeah. so i'm just thinking about like when i think of us as a duo yeah and we're always incorporating so much from uganda east africa we're so inspired by swahili culture mm -hmm. um how I don't, I'm just trying to think like that, that it is something we always are conscious of and yes, something where yes, we try yes. to be really careful of yeah. um, crediting everything of where it comes from. Uh, no, you, you, but I don't, I to, mean, I'm to, trying me, to, think. to me, you're one of the best examples of a person who appreciates a people's culture. Um, because when you participate, um, you are, you're fully immersed in it. You get me? You're not there to just... But I'm aware, I know that it does offend some people. I yeah, know even, even if I show appreciation, yeah. even if I have the knowledge, even if it's something I'm passionate about, my husband, where I live, yes. all these things, well, I know that it's still... Um, for some people, they, they feel like I don't have a right to represent any African art, music, culture, anything. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Well, opinions are opinions and everybody is pissed off about, um, about different things. We... Mm. we um, we, we have had so many incidents where we've received um, we've received love and then there are certain points where we have been in a bar in an unwelcome situation and yeah. it's, it's mostly yeah. love it's mostly, yeah, it, I, I think but, it's but, mostly but, but support I should say, but I should say that it's the, it, I see it in the same way where you find a person who's drunk of the Kool-Aid of this person is my enemy Right, the mm -hmm. same way um, the gunmen or these um, white Nazis run up in a Jewish church and shoot it, mm -hmm. it's because they have a, 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 an echo chamber of these ideas that that keep on feeding their um, anxieties. That they lash out at the wrong person who should be lashing out to. Um, you find that in most of these cases, we get tied up in the technicalities of of what is appropriation and what is appreciation and we take away a chance to just like bond and understand each other yeah. because ultimately here the struggle is the opportunities right isn't the struggle the opportunities um the struggle is in opening up opportunities the struggle is in empowering people to have equity yes equality yes it's not to replace racism with more uh with hatred Mm -hmm. But it is to find common ground and understanding. In Martin Luther's, this is how I understand the, 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 his speech in the dream. Um, so I look at exchanges, couch having a, an opportunities for cultural exchange. Um, and those are opportunities for travel, where a person who has never been to Africa goes to Africa and has a, an African uh, experience. By the time they come back to the U.S., there will be a different person from the so. person that yeah. went. Yes. And often it leaves a very positive mark of that they feel almost like certain places in Africa make people feel like it's a second home mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. um, so when you have these exchanges, when an African comes to the U.S., he has an understanding or, or comes to the, to the U.K., has a, a different understanding from the past. Um, basically, what we're saying is that, yes, thank you. What we're saying is that travel, travel usually um brings communities together and sometimes brings understanding of certain places and more cultural yeah, and I appropriation say there's, there's more cultural appreciation, appreciation. Yes. yeah and i want to say that travel or um there's different types of cultural festivals so yes. maybe someone can't travel to a place but they attend an interesting ethiopian festival and they see the clothes the music the food yeah. um and then they they buy a piece of, uh, a, a type of dress or a piece of jewelry because yes, they're like wow yes. that's beautiful yes. i had an amazing experience yeah. and this i now i can remember yeah. it so and and tell people about what so happened yeah i look at it this way that we have so many um artisans in africa who do not get the market they desire but then you find people who um have access to these markets and they know how to market these products right so they form these women's groups and help these people get their product to the western market so when I hear things going on where maybe someone from the black community looks at a white woman putting on a, a head wrap or wearing um, a gomesi or a print, mm -hmm. I understand where they're coming from by looking at that and being like, this B word is appropriating the culture. Mm -hmm. But when you think about the woman who is actually creating these dyes and prints who, has, who is using their ancient technique in 
are creating these beautiful African patterns, they're actually earning an income from more yeah, people appreciating that culture. It's a customer who's culture. going to say, oh, look what I bought. It's so beautiful. Yeah, look what I yeah. bought. I bought this kanzu from, from Tanzania. Look, mm-hmm. at, look at the designs, the Swahili designs on yeah. it. Or, or look at um, this cool Maasai bango that I have. Um, so the Maasai community or the... Um, it, anyway, that's how I look at it. I, I could be wrong. I could be... Um, well, that's why I'm saying it's subjective. But, but, but I'm saying it, it creates more... Mar- look at the... When, when you travel to places and you love their cuisine... Yeah. You always go out to cities looking for that cuisine yes. if it is good. Yes. So you create more appreciation for the chefs and the people in the mi- immigrant community that prepares that dish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there are benefits here. Um, and we are often very careful in our, um, in our interactions and in our, in our businesses that we conduct that we are well aware of this. Um, and... Yeah, because I also we want to create more platforms actually for our communities. Yeah, because on. I think about also like if if everything becomes sh- uh, framed as appropriation and people can't take pieces from each other's culture, or I guess the main issue is is the the white people taking pieces from other culture, right? Yeah, yeah. So then the question it's is, often the white people taking from? Yeah, well, that's <laughs> what we read in the definition. It was from the majority. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you go to a, there might be different examples in India of a majority taking from appropriating a different minority. Like yes, I don't know yes, those details. Yes, I yes. only know what I've lived. But what was I going to say? Oh, that. Then you start. You get into a place also where everything has to be separate. So if you think any white person wearing something or showing something is appropriating, then you don't give the space for the ones who are appreciating. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's I don't. True. It's, that's, that's where true. it gets. I think yes. often there's the assumption, the immediate assumption is that it's appropriation, but you don't necessarily yeah. know the story or what's going on around or it. Or the context. I there's sure is a there's a hell of a lot of appropriation. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah, yeah, it, but. I do think like there it's in terms of people understanding other people, having dialogue, learning about other cultures, there has to be space for the appreciation and sharing of culture as definitely, well. Definitely. Cult- cultural exchange is the thing. I think um, it, everything has a middle ground from the appropriation to the appreciation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the middle ground right there is where the exchange and the beauty, the beauty happens. You give credit to the people who started the culture you share in the opportunities um yeah. with the minority group i think that's the be- yeah, that, that's, if, if that's I, what nsimbi does yeah, cause by i'm the thinking way. if i do. don't wear yeah. a maasai if i don't wear a maasai bracelet when am i going to talk to other majority people about this is a beautiful maasai beaded bracelet yes they they're in and kenya they're mm-hmm. in tanzania they're like when so if you don't often these things br- uh, create dialogue or or share information yes. so it's like yes. i if you don't have those things, I'm just it, it's it's it just seems much harder for people to learn. Yeah, um, in this again I, to finish the point of us getting caught up in the politics in the in the liberal politics without looking at the the humanity the humanity being being the ultimate goal. Mm. Um, we should all realize that the biggest problem in the world is classism now. And racism is also very present among all of those. Let me finish my point. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm agreeing. I'm, it's, a, it's a tool now. Yeah, uh, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. I know, that, I know what you that, s- that, think. That, that racism <laughs> is a very big problem, but it's now being used as a tool by the people who like to divide um, the working man or the common mm-hmm. man who is struggling right now. They often throw these things like racism out there to keep on dividing the people and taking them away from what we all want, an equitable society. Yeah. What do we all want? Um, respect and human dignity. Mm-hmm. Can we all ar- arrive at that? And then also know that um, we all make mistakes. You get me? We all make mistakes. I don't want to, I don't want to be here trying to sound like um, I'm defending people who do um, uh, appropriation but um, I, sh- I mean, yeah, like, no, there are a lot. There's, of course, there's people who wear sty- hairstyles or clothing. They have yeah. no idea where things come from. Yeah, 
and they don't even know that they've existed. They think it's something new. Yeah, so but, I understand but, that but that's if problematic. But if I'm wearing cornrows on a red carpet, right? Mm -hmm. And I know this angers so many people, but let me say, I'm wearing cornrows on a, on a, on the red carpet. You as GNL? I love... No, 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 not me. Right. <laughs> let me let's say... You I'm as a, a white... Let's say, let's say I'm a white woman. Lady, okay. Um, wearing cornrows um, on the red carpet. Mm -hmm. um, if, if I'm not put... Because we know how red carpets work. Some people are stopped and interviewed well if you're just making it you move along you get me yeah so when do you get the opportunity to explain that your cornrows are actually attributed to a people do you get me like right 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 um so i mean but, but, but i also i also meant yeah. to say sorry uh for cutting you off i, I meant to say the, uh, there's a point i wanted to make that we also wear trousers like in Africa, we wear trousers, right? Some but of these some of these things were forced, but some of these things don't. I know belong. you're gonna say that those came from the West, but again, remember the definition is the majority taking from, from the, the minority. minority. Yeah, minority okay, can take that. from the majority, yes, because yes, yes. there's not the oppression attached. Oh to yeah, it. oh yeah, okay, I get, it, um, I get it. No, you know what? I was just thinking back, like when I was like, I oh, don't know, nine so or did, ten. Did we appropriate the chapati from India? Yeah, from this. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Who knows? I mean, again, it's ours you should, we should talk to some Indians about how they feel. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, yeah, please go. But no, I was thinking about like, it's a big thing in the US for people to go to Caribbean islands and get their hair braided. Mm -hmm. I did that when I was like nine or something. I don't, I, um, and a lot of people have an issue with that too. Yeah. But, but at the same but time, then you ask yourself, is, is the woman who braids these people's hair, does he earn money from this yeah does it bring in tourism dollars yes does it improve the community if it's doing something yeah. for if about improving people's lives let's get out of the politics and improve the human conditions and um also focus on the cultural exchange that's what yeah. i think that's how i see it and create more opportunities actually so i i see it as again i i try to just listen and, and see what people think i think yeah. there's definitely it's hard when we're talking about something being appropriate inappropriate and these are things that each person has their own judgment uh or where they draw the line um the, the, the problem is usually that the minorities or the minority communities um seem as if they're almost always willing to share but mm. but in in trying to share their culture um they are either sidelined and have to watch from the sides as someone mm -hmm. takes on their culture or they are manipulated right and and uh, their culture is used to enforce a negative stereotype mm. about that culture so it's problematic. It's uh, not a thing that we can solve in one discussion. No, it's... Um, but, but we are here to start conversations and um, um, to share, to share what we know and also from our, our experiences uh, as a cross-culture duo performing in, in Africa and Los Angeles, best, within, best in Kampala. Mm. Um, we... Yeah, there's, there, there, there are so many things we have, <laughs> we have thoughts about you get me and um there are so many things that we would like to see to see change because it's easy to comment when you're on twitter in the comfort of your duvet while the statements that you're perpetuating uh you might have never been to you you might have never slept hungry mm. you get me or struggling to take your kids to a hospital when you are an artisan making um materials that you you could sell you get me um yeah i think that's what i have to say on that yeah for now. i don't know yeah. it's it's like there's a lot of layers to this and yeah. um i think not all appropriation is all appropriation is bad yes yes but I'm, I'm trying to say some not all appreciation is appreciation some's app is appropriation and some appreciation is appreciation i don't know i it's like <laughs> I, I yeah yeah no i i know i know, we, I know, we, I know what you're trying to say i'm I, just uh, saying uh, for us like yeah 
exchanging in culture well, well, and talking okay. about culture and sharing maybe, culture maybe, is let, our... maybe maybe let's, let's first explain pe to people uh the philosophy of nsimbi music at least as i know it and i you tell me how you see it from mm -hmm. your side uh, to me as a cross-culture duo looking at the challenges of most metropolitan cities most communities right now in the world i see so many divisions Yes. And in so many, in having so many divisions, I feel or we feel uh, when we were starting the, the group, we felt we felt that there were so many things in African wisdom, ancient African wisdom that we were reading and we were discovering a lot of wisdom that would help p bring people together like we know most ancient communities, not only in Africa, were closely knit because of the wisdom they used to share yeah. and um, what the wisdom that kept all of them together. Mm -hmm. So in creating Simbi, we were, discover, re, we were reading African proverbs and we were so fascinated by Swahili proverbs. And uh, you were reading me Swahili proverbs and I was reading you uh, Baganda proverbs yeah. and and, di and diving into how th what that means to humanity. Being that East Africa is the origins of humanity. Yeah, yeah. East Africa this is the origin the, of so humanity. This, so therefore, so. that's the wisdom, the the original wisdom. Yeah, yeah, the original wisdom. Uh, it, that, that's the philosophy of Nsimbi. The birthplace of all of humanity is Africa, not just Africa, but we're talking about East Africa. The Great Rift and Valley. What, and what does the wisdom from that place? What? How could the ancient times? inform the present where we are given the um challenges that we are facing now and being at the tip of of division yeah you get me so, like, so how do we how do we use the, the the wisdom we have discovered to inform the future the the generations to see our way with all of these differences heal the differences and see that we arrive at a more harmonious uh, society a, not a, a more harmonious diverse society mm with a, a more diverse even i would even, even other than that a more diverse equitable society mm. yeah yeah so i think i agree with everything you've said and then i think i would add to that that as you're talking about divisions and there's so much hatred and and racism and just like ugliness that we see and i think so much of it for us is uh beyond sharing knowledge and culture is creating dialogue yes creating dialogue yeah so even the fact that we're having this conversation is what we want to do we're having definitely, a conversation about definitely. something that is is a struggle or that brings up these issues between people um and we don't we don't have answers yeah, we, 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 but we, i think it's it's like <laughs> we, we realized there was a very big problem and they need to have conversations like this um because everyone's to their it's like white people stick with white people black people, black stick people with it's black like people. When, but, but then again also also because um most of our fan base oh most of our fan base is in france according to the data and streaming our, i mean our streaming knows? fans are in, are in france it, yeah. and then we have um uganda and the u.s those are our biggest markets mm -hmm. right now but um we found that there are people in most of these pockets uh in the u.s in um f in the, let's say the u.s and uganda because that's where we've been the most Spent most of our time yeah is that when problems arose and the black lives matter movement was catching on and we began like having conversations beyond the party jokes and we're talking about the black experience of being a minority and you are talking about sharing about being a jewish descendant where your people were um almost wiped off the face of the earth because of hatred mm -hmm. you've seen you've you've been told and 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 know how far hatred can go to destroy a people yes or even seek to destroy the world those were two world wars that we saw mm -hmm. so in having that knowledge and um i think it comes from the experience of having the perspective of a people that have suffered um you you listen to people who come from a dominant culture spew ignorance and you're like i had no idea you are this ignorant not yes. in a bad way not to insult somebody no but, but you're like you don't know you have no idea 
what it's like to be hated every yeah. day mm-hmm. because of the color of your skin. So we were having all of these conversations and actually it was my white friends calling me and I realized that you expect that these people went to a college that they would know or have an idea about these American things which are always on the news. But because, right. like you said, everybody lives in the white bubble and other people live in the black bubble. If you don't have many of those interactions or if you live in cities where they're even seg- more segregated because of these divisions of neighborhoods that are rich, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. neighborhoods that are poor, we must keep the poor Red away, lining. away redlining. Yeah, yeah. You find that people do not have an opportunity to really have a conversation. Um, so I had that side of the ignorance. Mm-hmm. Right, and we began having conversation, and and in, also in Uganda, so many yeah. people with excellent intentions, yes, who think oh, they're these are not op- ter- right. Yeah, 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 these are not ra- these, these are not are, terrible people. No, they're good people. They're just but ignorant. Yeah, you, it's like the the understanding of yeah, yeah, of a minority's experience. Yes, um, yes in yes. daily life. Yes, P- a lot of people think things are extreme or only happen in uh, weird places, or they don't realize it's everyday life in every setting. My friend called me and said, bro, I'm just understanding that when you are telling me you are uncomfortable with me smoking weed in a car while driving, mm. what that what you meant by that? I thought you were just being too uptight. Mm-hmm. You get me? I'm like, no, if if we are driving at this time of the night if we get in this neighborhood, if we get pulled over, it could get to ugly me? for me. What happens to you? What happens yeah. to me? What mm-hmm. happens to you? You, you, you? you have your white privilege. I have issues that I'm dealing with as a black man in America. Mm-hmm. And we had a conversation. Um, but I know I know him not to be a terrible person, at least from what I know. Yes. He's a decent, he's I a agree. very decent human <laughs> being. Uh, but <laughs> continuing on this conversation and why we need to have conversations like this, where it's not just about getting angry, but can we have a conversation? In Uganda, during the Black Lives Matter movement, right? All black people and all white people who have a conscience and who um, were there for fairness and equality were marching saying black lives matter. The leading TV station in my country, right, Mm -hmm. had entertainers wear a t-shirt that said all lives matter. Ignorance. Ignorance. They didn't know. Ignorance at its utmost. So, I saw the ignor- that ignorance. I Instead of being angry, I was like, wow. They don't know. What you don't know yeah. the context of yes. what that means. Yes. But in, that, and in, in, in the U.S. Right, because you can see things on news or in stories on social media, but it's like what you get from a conversation, I think, is much, is much, yeah. much deeper. Yeah. Um, you can actually ask questions or clarify yeah and forgive me if ignorance is the wrong word to use i don't know I what what is because if you don't like know something you're ignorant it's not meant yeah. in any uh in any negative way um yeah but you're saying please conversations and where you arrive at understanding yeah so i mean if i take that back to this idea about appropriation can you have conversations without sharing other items of culture or styles or food like i don't Sure, you could just talk, but I think that these things are good, nice bridges. Yeah. Um, and last beyond the conversation. Yes. And can create further conversations. Yes. Beyond the, yeah, the, the two I- people in the that The initial. idea is to create a better know. society. The idea is not to always see each other as the enemy. The goal is to arrive at an equitable society which has equal opportunities for everybody. So let's not forget... Uh, what the goal is let the politicians not play us um we are all human uh, at our core and in the perfect in simbi philosophy all humans began in east africa before they migrated and everybody changed color everybody began in east africa um in that beautiful place between two rift valleys is where humanity began and so instead of looking at the things that divide us like color can we remember where we are from? Yeah. As 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 um as a as um as a species. Yes. And as humanity. All of these yeah. beautiful words and the values they all they, these beautiful they words yeah. and and philosophy that I 
believe and agree with. And yeah. I'll just add, if you love culture, if you appreciate culture, make sure you create opportunities for people from those cultures or you acknowledge or you you share what you know about those cultures. I mean, that's what like. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you were I, like, no, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, no, just uh, yeah. if you think you're someone who loves culture. Yeah. Go out of your way to. To, to make create sure, opportunities to, to and opportunities and giving credit yeah, like opportunities like, credit um yeah go out of your way and be an ally go out of your way and be a friend a partner be human at the end of the day mm -hmm. be human um my name is gnl zamba miriam tamar and together we are in simbi cross culture <laughs> duo from uganda living in uganda <laughs> yeah the, this, we're, we're, this we're just, uganda we're just life, a uganda you know? Yeah. yeah let's see how am i uh, yeah <laughs> okay so tell us what you think in the comments about about this conversation and how we can um do better to serve humanity um all of us it's our responsibility um it's our responsibility to be good to each other and to make each other's experience and journey on earth pleasurable we love you guys so much see you on the next one lots of love peace